300 meters, I <laughs> sense, went slightly better than the 400 meters. Yeah, hi, hi everybody. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, yeah, so I started my season with a 400 and then a 300, and obviously we're now coming down to two. The 400 was an incredibly long way. <laughs> it was not the most enjoyable thing. Obviously, short is amazing and far more used to it. And um, I was like, yeah, this is something I will not be doing in the future. <laughs> but the 300 was a lot of fun, and obviously I'm just so excited to be back where yeah, I belong <laughs> at uh, two. <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, definitely for British athletes, it's the busiest season we've ever had. We've got a World Championships, and then we've got to fly home for a home Commonwealth Games. And then, again, a week later, we have the European Championships in Munich. And because I hold yeah, four titles across those ones, I'm definitely going to be very busy. And yeah, with it being a home Commonwealth Games as well, we always want to go and represent England um, incredibly well. So um, for me, I'm focusing first and foremost on the World Championships and performing well there, and then we will very much take everything in our stride, but I do aim to be performing um, at my best at all three, so um, hopefully a very busy and exciting season. How much of a possibility do you think that, that is? Um, well, I always think that anything's possible, and as you said, people have got faster year on year. It's been amazing to be part of um, such an incredible um, group of women running so quickly at the moment and it's exciting every single race that you line up in and yeah I would never I would honestly never say never so we'll have to wait and see um yeah I would think so um you know we opened and closed our season at the world champs and um you know I don't think I can complain walking away with the gold medal uh, and and like Dina a, a, a very busy season potentially for you have you already worked out a how you're going to approach it and b exactly how you're going to tackle it um, my coach and I were uh, obviously taking things one step at a time. Um, you know, we're just basically the main thing is just work, making sure that we're training well um, and we're making the decisions as we go. But um, for right now, the main goal for us is in Eugene um, for, to try and take home the, the title. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. But like I said, everything's going really well in training right now, and we're excited to see. Yeah, uh, it was my first time competing uh, back there um, after the renovations, and um, it's a pretty quick track, uh, obviously, and I'm expecting to see some really fast times there um, at both the Diamond League and the, um, the World Championship. So I'm excited for it. Um, like I said, everything's going really well, and I think the competition's going to be really fast. Excellent. Me through that, that world record jump. The stadium is yours. All the cameras in the world are, are, are pointing at you, and you're standing at the end of the... The runway. What what goes through the head of Mondu de Plantis? Yeah, it was. I think it, it was one of these situations where you know I, I'm not. I'm not usually surprised by myself because I usually you know ex expect really really great things out of myself. I have high expectations going into any competition, but I, I felt like in that particular situation, it was such a long competition, and I was kind of tired towards the end there because it was you know I'd been out there for three and a half, four hours or so. And so, um, you know, it, it was getting to the point to where I didn't know if I was fresh enough to be able to, you know, do a jump like 620. So, um, you know, really, I think it, it was one of these uh, situations where if I didn't have the, the crowd just staring only at me and I have like, you know, all the adrenaline that I did, then I don't know if I'd have been able to do it. But um, yeah, it, it was one of the few times where I'm falling, falling, uh, onto the bat and I'm like actually kind of genuinely surprised that I, that I did what I just did. So uh, it was a, you know, I don't know, how do you explain one of those kind of feelings? But it was, a, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty surreal. But how tough is it that you know that everybody else is expecting those great achievements as well? Yeah, I, I mean, it, yeah, it, 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 it can be tough at times. I, I, I try not to think about it too much, especially because I, I, I understand like, I understand the, the sport and I, I know that it's really hard and I know that I'm not going to be able to break a world record every day, even though, you know, people do expect that out of me sometimes. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, um, you know, I don't know. It, it's, it's just one of these things that, you know, you, you get used to over the past year or two that, you know, it's just kind of part of the game at this point when you, when you go out there and you break a few world records, people just kind of, they want it all the time out of you. But, um, you know, I, I, I go out there and I, I give it 110% every, every time I'm out on the track, and that's basically all I can do. Um, they want to know, have you changed anything about your uh, training setup over the winter? Um, no. I was trying to think. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, I haven't changed anything about my training setup. Um, last year was a bit frustrating to have picked up 
um, a relatively minor injury at a very inconvenient time in the season, very inconvenient time in the Olympic cycle. So, but we were very confident that um, I was in a great place coming into that. And um, so it wouldn't have made sense to change anything, just review what happened and, and move forward and just make sure that I'm faster last year than I was. No, oh, yeah, faster than last year. So, yeah. I was Smith again. Yeah, I'm fine. It was a bit annoying because, yeah, a few weeks later I was kind of almost back in PB shape for, like, the Diamond League finals and stuff. But, again, it was just very annoying timing. But it doesn't really change anything about, yeah, the kind of form that I was in, the kind of form that I, I have been in, the amount of improvements that I've actually made as an athlete since I was running last time in, in Doha in 2019. So I'm just really excited to kind of get start running tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, continue on the Diamond League season, obviously get to the business end of the season as well when you're in peak shape, and it will be fun to just kind of showcase the work that we've been doing over the past three years. Um, not so much. Um, you know, we had to take things a little bit easier coming in. Um, obviously, we were coming back from an injury after Tokyo, and um, yeah, so coach took a little bit of time with bringing me back into the normal schedule um, with training, but uh, we've stepped it up. Uh, throughout, and um, you know, we picked up a few little knickknacks here and there, but it's a part of sports. Um, but yeah, we've, we've been making our way through it, and training has been going really well. And um, yeah, we're expecting great things this year, and uh, we'll see if we can, we can come from it. I think the women's 400 is a pretty hot event right now. Um, you know, just to make the uh, Olympic final last year, everyone had to run sub 50. So um, you know, it, it's pretty hot, um, and I think everyone's bringing out their A game, and I'm expecting it to, to continue to. Um, push forward and I think the ladies that are coming up right now are exceptional and um, yeah I think the foreign is gonna gonna go really far real soon you know I'm, I'm assuming you know it must must it must hurt them a bit that they they just can't compete with you at this moment in time I guess that's a question for them not <laughs> but, but um, no I mean I, th I think it's it's one of these situations where especially in like particularly our event it's just like you know at, at the end of the day we're, we're you're almost not really competing against each other. You're kind of just competing against yourself in the bar. So, because like, it's not like a, you know, like a sprint where like, you know, you know, these two are like actually competing against each other. Like whatever the other one does like really matters to their result. For us, it's like, you know, even if, you know, whether it's Chris or Sam or whoever makes or misses that bar, like I still have to go make that bar. Mm -hmm. So like, it's still just up to me in getting over that bar at the end of the day. So it's kind of like a, it's different event in, in that kind of way. So I think that's why it's a little bit, easier as far as like the camaraderie side of things and we're out there for like a super long time so that also makes a difference um perhaps i mean we've obviously got a really nice new stadium in birmingham which i'll be fortunate enough to try out next week i'm very excited for that and very excited for the commonwealth games but perhaps i always think that london is the center of sport in the uk and it would be amazing to kind of have a base and and really use the london stadium particularly as it is the olympic stadium it's where the anniversary games has been and obviously all the other major sports have their base in london but um birmingham is a beautiful stadium and the, the birmingham diamond league is very much a staple of the diamond league calendar as well so yeah uh, and, and i have not i do not know what you're <laughs> on talking about <laughs> so i was like has london been in the press <laughs> crystal palace what <laughs> But, um, I mean, obviously any kind of profile for track and field is, is good, and especially in the UK. Um, there's so many incredibly popular sports in the UK, and the market is so saturated for sports. So if the profile track and field is being raised, I'm all for it, but I have to apologize. <laughs> I have been very much focused on Doha and kind of coming here, so I probably missed it in my, in my little travel um, schedule. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that's, that's pretty right. Um, I mean, I think that, um, you know, as, as far as for, you know, pole vaulting and what I do, that it's a, it's a really technical event and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really important to, to compete and go out there and try to get a rhythm and timing of your jumping. So uh, I'm going to have a pretty full schedule, four or five meets or so before the World Championships. And so really I'm just taking it meet at a time, trying to gather as much information because, you know, um, yeah, and what I'm doing, it's, it's, you know, it comes down to these little tiny margins. So I'm just trying to get, you know, everything in the right place for when it comes time to Eugene and the World Championships to make sure that, you know, when the bar is at that gold medal height, I'm on the right pole, right grip, right run, all those kind of, those little things that add up to, you know, to those kind of jumps. So, uh, yeah, World Championships, that's kind of the thing that I'm, I'm missing right now as far as the accolades. So uh, I want to, you know, complete the set. So, uh, 
that's that's pretty much the main focus. Yourself? Um, well, it's not my season opener, um, but I'm expecting just to run well um, tomorrow. You know, the main thing is, you know, we're trying new race models and um, we're trying to find that perfect one for Eugene uh, that we can go sub um, 48. Um, but for right now, it's just testing things out and, um, you know, getting a little bit familiar with it. But I'm expecting still fast times. Um, but overall, I'm just looking for a great competition with the girls and just getting the feel of, of the competition. Yes. Honestly, I'm just expect, well, I'm hope, expecting to go out there and perform really well and put together a good race model. I think that that's always the wisest thing to do when you're um, early in the season. I think even if you think back to last year when the season opener for me was Gateshead in the pouring rain, um, if you kind of have expectations of time sometimes um, early on, you're not always <laughs> fulfilled for reasons that are outside your control. So for me, just got to go and make sure you get your race right and make sure you're focused and you execute and yeah sometimes that results in a fast time and sometimes other stuff means that it doesn't but um yeah as long as it all goes together well your coach is happy and it's all moving in the right direction then that's a great day yeah i, I feel like i'm in i'm in good shape yeah i mean yeah it's it's it is one is one of those kind of events where like it does it can take some getting used to in the in the beginning of the season but i, I feel like as far as like Train's been going. I've been jumping, jumping really well. It's a, it's a little bit different when you get to outdoor season because you know you have the the weather kind of to take in, and um, so you know that can that can change things a little bit. It's hard, a little bit harder to to find some consistency at times, but um, other than that, yeah, I, I feel like I'm in, you know, good enough shape to do good things. Good <laughs> you things nearly so. you nearly said it, didn't you? No. <laughs> you nearly said the next time. No, 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 but. <laughs> yeah, but has I don't know I don't know if anybody's jumped six meters in Qatar. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. I need a fact check. Nobody. Yeah. Well then, so somebody needs to do it. Somebody. Needs to, yeah. yeah. Soon. You Soon. heard it here Soon. first. It was a little bit different. Um, you know, I'm someone that feeds off of the crowd. Um, that's where I get a little bit of my energy boost, and so um, it did feel a little bit more like training, but. Um, I guess I was fortunate enough that uh, my 400 was more towards the ending of the uh, track schedule and I had a lot of the athletes come out um, to support. So uh, just being able to hear a little bit of people cheering, I, th I think it was good. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a different feeling, but I'm, I'm definitely ready for uh, the crowd to be back. It's just a dream comes true, you know what I mean? After the Olympic gold medal, I never think it would be possible to have again that feeling of joy and happiness. and. Uh, I always loved basketball, and when they called me to go there and to play that game, I looked like a uh, baby when <laughs> you give him candies. I was really happy and uh, enjoy every single second in that floor. It was amazing. Now I'm waiting for the call for Boston Celtics. So <laughs> 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 what high jumper does, jumping. <laughs> so I just saw that ball, it goes uh, out of the basket, and I tried to take that. I, I, I think in my, I, th I was thinking, it's my moment. If I don't do it now, I <laughs> It's my moment, so everything goes well, and uh, that dunk uh, traveled around all the world. It was just, it's just amazing. Two days after, when I met Stephen Curry, for, and I was asking him a picture, he looked at me and said, oh, you are the man of the dunking. I said, what? <laughs> you know who I am? <laughs> that was just amazing, you know, and really, I will never forget that moment. Uh, I'm becoming a way, wazer year by year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more wise, so <laughs> no, I'm joking. I I don't know about my my beard. I uh, last year I didn't shave my half beard in the Olympics, but it doesn't mean I will never do it again. It's something that if I if I feel that I have to push myself over something, I will always think about it. So it, it's not finished. It, it will never finish. <laughs> I was gonna say what. Oh, uh, first of all, good morning, everyone. Um, definitely, you just mentioned that uh, you know FIFA World Cup is coming to Doha, you know, uh, this year. Uh, so definitely, for me, just like it's home, so I definitely have to be a part of this and support as much as possible. In terms of football skills, I'm just honest. I'm very bad. Uh, I'm very bad. I support, you know, my brother, my friends. Oh no, 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 not definitely not. I'm very bad, but I enjoy it. So for me, it's nice to do something outside my actual event and uh, just for the enjoyment of it so yeah I picked up some football some golfing and yeah, a few stuff on the side I mean it's a, it's a celebration you know it's a sports festival a celebration you know it's like 
I think, I don't know actually what's big, the Olympics, to me definitely the Olympics, but it's arguably FIFA or the Olympics, the World Cup, but I mean it's the same scale when it comes to people want to go out there and literally there is no rules, we're out there enjoying ourselves, supporting, people come from everywhere, um, doesn't matter if you're a fan or not, you take your family, your kids, go out there, support, enjoy the atmosphere, so you can sense people already start to have uh, plans, like, oh, what are we going to do, it's not going to be in school, so we're going to do this, we're going to go here, so... I think it's going to be just an amazing time, so I hope everyone to enjoy and wish all the teams that participate all the best. Um, I don't look at it as a negative or positive thing. It's just a thing that whatever my schedule, that's the day that we're going to be ready for. It doesn't matter if it's in May or June or July. In terms of preparation, especially it's a championship year, of course, definitely it's very early, very early of the season. And uh, to be honest, if he wouldn't be home, I probably wouldn't jump. But again, this is home, so it doesn't matter. I know that people are going to be out there, my family, my friends, everyone out there going to be cheering for me and always very special feeling to compete home. I mean, took my first step into the sport that I love here, and it's always very special to me. Uh, I would say 100% yes. I mean, the competition day, uh, always when I woke up, whatever it, it's the weather, I feel, wow, this is the perfect weather. <laughs> you know, I, I just say myself, everything is positive because I want to be positive. And, uh, of course, I'm very happy to be here in Doha because I feel like this is my, like, after what happened in the Olympic game, I feel like this is my second home, you know. When I came here one month ago, uh, I, felt, I felt like being welcome as a son. So I really want to thank everybody here, the president and the country and Mutaz and oh, everybody, because really it's a special feeling. And uh, I'm very happy and proud to start my season here, and I'm looking forward to do it tomorrow. Um, to be honest, high jump been really rising for the past few years. Um, I remember before I started my Diamond uh, debut in 2011, I was always watching and I, I could, uh, I remember watching some athletes actually winning the Diamond meet with around 225, 226, 227. Um, I was lucky enough then to be able to participate from 2011 upward and then I remember sometimes you could jump 230, 31, 32 and they'd be like, um, you don't have a spot. And that just shows how much the progress has been going on. And uh, 2013, I jumped 214 in Eugene. And I remember, because I'm also a fan of the sport, looking from a fan perspective, I felt like we used to hear about, oh, they used to do this back then. They used to jump, but it's almost become more like a fiction, so nobody has done it. 2013, that happened, and then like five guys been doing it, and the level been just going crazy ever since. Like literally, I remember my younger brother can look at me. I can go to some meet and jump 238, and he'd be like, "Ah, oh, what happened today? <laughs> like, what happened? This is 238. This is still the second highest jump in the world. Yeah, but you jump 40 a few times. This is nothing. So this is just the, the kind of pressure that you have to deal with and the expectation. And with that, it's only happened because the level being really pushed high. So to answer your questions, yeah, I think. Uh, it's been going really well this season. If you talk about this season, I don't know. It's still in the beginning to kick up, but I know it's going to be up there. It's a lot of guys upcoming also, like very competitive. And uh, I think it's, it's definitely rising. Mm -hmm. and yeah, Belgrade, uh, we didn't plan at all to do the indoor season because outdoor was uh, just very long and motivational, you know, very, very hard to afford it. But when we arrived, like two weeks from the World Championship, we were f looking at the start list, we were looking at ourselves. I see I was in a good shape. Even if I didn't jump in training, we just say, let's try. I mean, let's try to jump. And actually, that technique doesn't go really well at all. But I say myself, I don't care. I'm in shape, so I can go there and I want to fight. My strongest part of my uh, career has always been my mind in competition. So I say myself, go there and try to fight. And it, it worked it. I mean, and take a medal at World Indoor Championship in that condition, it's, it, it was really good. And for answer the question you have done before, I think uh, we have never seen a, a, an high jump Olympic Games uh, such high level because last year was just crazy competition. Uh, six people were, were trying to turn nine. It never, it never happened in, the, in this history. So. We can see sometimes the level go down, but when it counts, people can jump. So that's what it counts, and it would be it would be amazing in Eugene, I'm sure. Um, the main target, I think, for the summer is definitely the World Championships in Eugene. Uh, 
I remember back in 2019, beginning of 2019, and the press, I think some guy asked me, like, how do you feel if you're gonna, ever going to win in Doha and defend your, t your title? You're going to be the only high jump that ever does that. And that stuck with me. And I was so focused to do that. So, and I've, I've done it, and it feel amazing. Uh, and now that I'm trying to find some, something, like some goal, some target to motivate myself, I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's even better to be the only one that did it three times. So, and that kind of keep me going and try me to find motivation. As Marcus said, it's not easy to find motivation after such a big year, such a big success. And uh, sometimes you just need to take a step down and try to find, set some pillars that are going to get you back again, your feet, and keep that fire still sparking. And uh, I think I can say that I finally find one or two things that <laughs> and keep me going and more so. Uh, yes, but at the same time, no. <laughs> In the sense that for me, the World Championship is my 100%. I mean, and, I mean, uh, we're working for it and the European will be after it, but I'm not thinking about it at all. I think if you reach uh, your condition for the World Championship, is it's not going to be difficult to take it for two weeks more. So, um, as you say, it's it changed everything after the Olympic. Not because we won the Olympic, but because we achieve our dream. It's not because it changed your life uh, around you, but because you you were working for it since you are a kid. In my in my case, but also in his case, after my injury, I was like, really, you are the only one who think it's possible. And when you achieve it, then you have to change page and think how to motivate yourself for the next season. It's not that that doesn't mean we are not motivated. We are really motivated. We talk a lot. We we both say ourselves. We go there, in Eugene, and we we deliver it. But it's different. We have to find a way to push ourselves. And of course, for him, win the three times World Championship, it's something that nobody have done. So I, I'm sure it's gonna it's gonna jump high there. For myself, I never won uh, the world out, the world outdoor. So it's the last big competition that I need to win, and it's something that. It pushed me. So let's see who will have, <laughs> who will have what we've been doing this ever since. I don't know nothing but more than that. So, but when it comes to certain, certain moments, I think there's a little bit, something a little bit more important to show your human side. And that I think what people really uh, appreciate. Yeah, well, I, I remember we have spent, after the, that moment, we have spent all the night together in the Olympic Village in the morning. And when you are in the Olympic Village, there are everybody's athletes, no? You know, everybody are, are athletes and do sports high level. So nobody's asking for picture, except if you see Roger Federer, Kobe Bur if you see uh, Shaquille O'Neal, or, you know, the big, big stars. And when we finished that competition, you remember, in that morning, morning every single person see us in the street walking, they were asking us for a picture. And we say, what is going on, you know? It's not common. When you walk in the village, nobody's asking for a picture. Just the big, big mm, mm, legends. Mm. And that moment, everybody saw that moment, and everybody understood that it was a different moment. It would be, it would stay there for a long, long time. So it was just crazy. <laughs>